How do you evaluate brain fog? This is one of the top things that many people go to medical providers for, is struggling with brain fog. Now, first, what exactly is brain fog? Now, I want you to bear with me as we go through this, because this is gonna be a sequence. What is brain fog? Now, I want you to think in your mind what it is, right? Each of you are going to have something that overlaps, but it's probably a little bit different in their mind. For some of you, it just means my brain isn't as fast as it should be. I feel cloudy or hazy. I just feel a little slow. I can't find the words I'm looking for. I'm zoning out for any combination of those. But that is a symptom and a description of that symptom. But what happens at the cellular level and what is responsible for brain fog? That is the most important thing, okay? So when we look at the brain, there are three things that you really want to evaluate and dissect. Now, you, these can be evaluated at different levels. But when we look at brain fog, right, we've got to say, this is ultimately the brain, right? So if it's problems with finding words, processing speed, we should say, how well is your brain connecting? And believe it or not, there's actually ways to evaluate how well your brain's connecting. Some of the ones that I really like are eye movements. So our eyes are one of the best windows into the health of the brain we have. Okay, we can map these out over about 30 minutes and tell you what's happening throughout your brain in numerous spots. And if it's off, we can predictably rehab it and you'll feel better. So eyes, super important. Next, balance. Next, cognition. And lastly, brain waves. So there's a lot of things that you may have heard of, like brain mapping or QEGs. Your brain is ultimately like an orchestra, right? You've got all these different sections with brain waves, and you want the right amount of each brain wave. You don't want too much or too little. And depending on the part of the song, you may have different amounts, right? Like when you have sleep, you want more of certain brain waves than you do if you're awake concentrating. Well, with this, we can look at the brain waves and say what's happening when you're sitting there at rest. That's a best representation of where your brain is throughout the day. And that's off with all these things. We get a good idea of what's happening. Next, brain fog. Problems with energy production and utilization. So if your brain's not as efficient because it doesn't connect as well, this is ultimately going to impact your energy. So it does connect, but we have to say what else impacts your energy? What about blood sugar? Some put BS, right? What about sleep? What about foods? What about hormone production? And so much more. So it's not enough to just have your brain evaluated with how it's connected, but you should also understand the fundamentals of health and then get labs looked at to see what's happening there as well, because that will also impact you. And then lastly with brain fog is, I want you to think about inflammation, okay? Inflammation in the body can create inflammation in the brain. All of these things that I just listed here, sleep, blood sugar, foods, now we can add in stress, we can add in infections, okay? These are all things that can contribute to the amount of inflammation in the body. Ultimately, inflammation in the body, while it should stay within the body, it can get an impact on the brain, especially the longer you've had these inflammatory triggers going. So these are the three things that I really want you to have dissected, okay? These are like pillars, and then there's much more that flows from it. So how your brain's connecting, energy production, utilization, and inflammation. When people are struggling with brain fog, once again, when those three things are looked at, I universally see people do really, really well, but it requires patience and it requires time because what it is for one person may not be it for someone else. So for someone, it may just be food. That may be it. For someone else, it may just be hormones. But what if your combination of food, hormones, stress, brain connective issues from concussions, whiplash injuries, and other things like that? Now you see where it gets more nuanced. 
So there's not a magic bullet for treating brain fog, but there is a process that can work. I want to keep making these videos, so please comment below, like it, share it with others, because that's the only way this information gets out and people can finally start getting the evaluation. And ultimately, because of the right evaluation, you can get the treatment that you need to finally get better. Hope you found this useful. Until next time, this is Dr. Z. I'm known as the Brain Guy.